Our first presentation will be living uh, with Fontaine associated protein losing enteropathy. We have an excellent guest, Ms. Ellie Menick, who I had the pleasure to know in person. Ms. Menick is a senior at Mason High School in Cincinnati, Ohio, where, where she is the student body president this year. This is especially impressive given that Mason High School has over uh, 3,500 students. Uh, Ms. Menick will share her experience as a person with Fontaine circulation and protein losing enteropathy. And I'm also very excited to say that Ms. Menick will be our co-moderator for this session. Welcome, Ms. Minnick. Thank you so much for that sweet introduction. Um, I'm really excited to be here and just share <clears throat> my health journey and story um, just about living with PLE and um, having a Fontan. So I was born with a double inlet left ventricle. Um, it was first noticed that my heart was underdeveloped, but unfortunately there wasn't a follow-up. So I was diagnosed at two months old with double inlet left ventricle with, with which is a pretty complex CHD. Um, but yeah, I've had three open heart surgeries, Norwood, Glenn, and of course, Fontan. Um, I've lived a very typical life with a complex CHD. Um, I was a competitive gymnast and golfer, um, and I had annual appointments once a year. They were very uneventful. Um, they were mainly just a checkup, and I was doing um, unusually well for someone with such a complex um, heart problem. So it was um, very surprising when I was diagnosed with PLE. So I was diagnosed with PLE at age 14, so that was in 2016. Um, this first photo right here, it was when I first noticed my ankles were a little bit swollen. Um, I contacted my mom and my cardiologist and we got my albumin numbers tested and then that's when I was diagnosed. Um, I initially had monthly albumin infusions and they were inpatient and I stayed overnight, but then thankfully they turned into outpatient. I only had to stay for a day. Um, this photo here is just one of or during one of my albumin infusions. Um, and they were pretty simple, but you know, still something not fun. And you know, I didn't enjoy them. Um, thankfully, they're periodic now. So if I'm in the hospital, or if my numbers are a little bit lower, I'll typically get one, but uh, they're not as consistent. Um, I've had two heart caths since uh, I was first diagnosed, um, one a few months after and then one in 2018 with stents put in. Um, a complication of a Fontan and PLE is liver lesions. So I have liver MRIs every six months to see the growth and if they're looking okay and just making sure everything's still healthy. Um, I have had two liver biopsies, which have both come back clear, but we just make sure we monitor them and all looks well. Another kind of symptom and a big complication of PLE is edema in ankles and shins, and then sometimes mine goes up to my knee. Um, as you can tell from this photo right here, uh, my ankles can become very big, um, and it's something that happens pretty frequently with me, um, and it's not always connected to uh, my PLE or low levels of albumin, which is what we initially thought. Sometimes it's just my environment, if the weather's hot, or if I'm on an airplane and didn't bring compression socks, or even if my ankles or my feet are just dangling off a chair, my ankles can become um, pretty swollen. So this is just a continuation. So a big complication that uh, my family and I, we've kind of noticed and clearly evident from the photos is how poor my healing has become. Um, two years ago, or in 2017, um, a, few week, a few weeks after I came back from my Make-A-Wish trip, I was doing a box jump, which, which is just an exercise, and I slipped and I cut my shin open, and I had about 18 stitches. And in the middle, it opened up right here, and it became infected, and it took a total of eight weeks of healing, which was unusually long and it kind of showed how my body was starting to struggle with healing and you know kind of gaining back that you know usual, usual strength and then the other photo was last year in Canada I was in a hotel room and I walked into a drawer and I just hit my shin and it just the wound it was there and it was gruesome and I had about nine stitches, only two held and it also did become infected. Um, and that was about 12 weeks of healing. So I think with PLE, it's really bringing down the health of my body and just showing how uh, hard it is my body to handle these kind of severe injuries and these wounds and especially the healing process of it. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a struggle 
um, having these wounds and uh, managing the fact that it took a long time for my body to heal. Um, another complication of PLE is low bone density. I've had two DEXA scans, I think one before PLE for a study, um, I mean before PLE, and then one after. Um, and it did show that I, I did have low bone density and I work with an endocrinologist to make sure we have the best plan possible to help me in my health um, and just help me be a stronger person. And then I do have a couple of GI issues. Um, I struggled with some even before my diagnosis of PLE. Um, I had a lot of reflux and gallbladder sludge, but thankfully I'm done with my gallbladder sludge, but I do continue to work with um, the GI team and the cardio and they work together, um, just making sure that everything, um, you know, in the abdominal area and again, my liver and reflux is just working okay and it's working okay together. So my thoughts on PLE. So overall, my quality of life has decreased in the way that I have more appointments, more procedures, daily meds. I used to take just one aspirin a day before PLE, you know, and even that I was a little bit annoyed with. But then after PLE, you know, I'm taking different medications, different dosages, three times a day, six hours apart. So it's a very strict regimen that I wasn't used to. And I had definitely had to adjust to that new way of life uh, with PLE. And again, having the liver biopsies and heart caths, which was something I definitely was not used to before. Um, so, but thankfully I have a supportive team and supportive family that, um, you know, helps me through anything. Um, and then a main thing also is my worrying has increased, I think, um, with PLE. Um, my fear of injury, especially because of my shins, I've noticed that I've had to become much more aware of my surroundings and, you know, being careful and staying safe and, you know, just making sure that, you know, anything I do, I'm just cautious of, you know, in making sure I'm protecting my body um, in any way possible. And then also edema, this is more of a teenager thing for me is uh, with PLE, I do have very swollen shins and ankles, even if it's just caused by my environment, you know, it's very hard for me to fit into shoes, you know, I have to bring compression socks and it's a big almost insecurity of mine and I think only I notice it and my family will notice it. Um, but other than that, no one really pays attention but it definitely is something that happens very frequently um, with me um, and just getting those swollen ankles. And then also heart transplant. Um, before PLE, I honestly thought I wouldn't be talking about uh, being on the heart transplant list or even talking with the team before college, you know, or in my teen years, very naive about that. Um, but with PLE and the different medications I'm taking and the strain it's kind of having on my body, um, it has definitely been on the forefront of a lot of our discussions and, you know, it's something that's very possible to happen within the next few years or even be on the list. So it's definitely something that's a worry, you know, and it's inevitable, but um, again, I have a great support team and so many people by my side uh, that just want to have the best plan for me and push it off as long as possible. Um, but even with all of that, uh, PLE has not stopped. Uh, my typical teenage life. Um, I'm on the varsity dance team at my school. Um, it's going to be my third year on it and I just love strengthening my body and you know I feel like I'm helping it and just being with my friends and it's just a great place for me to exercise and just do what I love. Um, and then I'm also student body president um, which I'm very honored to be elected that and I'm very excited to be working with my peers and planning events and um, you know it's very typical to typical life and I have a great quality of life um, with PLE even so. And then I'm also in NHS and a Hope Squad member. So even with all of this, you know, I've learned that PLE doesn't define who I am. It's not the center of my world. You know, I think what's important to me is my family and my friends and just how I live my life and keeping that positive mindset no matter what. So for my future, um, 
I have a lymphatic evaluation possibly within six to nine months. Um, it's, we're not sure exactly when it's gonna be scheduled, but we're hoping that this can maybe help my body and help with PLE and again, the different meds I'm taking um, and maybe the heart transplant, heart transplant could be delayed a little bit, um, but yeah. Again, heart transplant is inevitable. It is in my future. But I think our goal for right now is just keeping my body as healthy as possible and delaying it and pushing it off until later. And then also my call, uh, future, I do have college applications. I'm very, very grateful and I feel privileged enough to apply to colleges and kind of further my education. Um, and I'll be, I mean, I'll be graduating from high school this year, which is something that I'm very excited about and I'm very um, grateful for. Um, and yes. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I really appreciate it and I'm honored to share my kind of health story with you all. Thank you so much, Ms. Minnick. That was a phenomenal presentation. Very, very inspiring story. And although you've had some struggles with the PLE, you're clearly thriving in your life. And that's fantastic to hear. I think all the families and patients who joined us today are, are probably really value your, your story. Um, I, I do have one question. What, if there's one thing that you could tell other families or patients who deal with chronic conditions like protein losing enteropathy, what would you tell them that could help them cope with such a condition? Yeah, and this is a great question. Um, it's, you know, it's very hard. I have more than one um, <laughs> kind of thing that may help with um, kind of coping with sometimes this chronic condition. Um, I think one thing is when I was first diagnosed with PLE, I was so focused on how swollen my ankles were. I think that was kind of the focal point for me and almost the trigger for me that whenever I saw that my ankles were swollen, I kind of panicked, you know, and I, my mom and I would just be worried and stressed and it was almost needless worrying. And again, this isn't for everybody and this isn't for everybody with PLE, but at least for me, I kind of learned over time that, uh, you know, my ankles being swollen or my numbers may fluctuate a little bit. It was just environment and almost random in a way. But again, that isn't um, for everyone. And then also secondly, um, I think I had to remember that con uh, talking to my doctors and communicating with them is very important. And then your doctors communicating with each other. I think, you know, you want to have a great team and a great support um, that has your back and, you know, wants to make the best plan possible for you. I have cardio and GI and endocrinology all working together, you know, making sure that we're all communicating and have the best plan possible um, in order to be healthy and be uh, successful for the future. Um, and then another thing I have is um, I think a lot of people underestimate the power of clean eating and healthy eating. Um, I had a lot of GI issues before I was even diagnosed with PLE. So my family and I completely changed the way we um, ate and the way we, you know, we bought food and ate food and cooked it. Um, and I think with having a chronic condition, uh, there's so much you can't predict and it's really hard to know what to expect for the future you know in the next day week year month um but the one thing that i feel like i can control is what i put in my body and how i can nourish and replenish and uh makes me feel stronger both mentally and physically and i just think eating clean is you know something super important and not talked about too much and then i think finally which is this sounds very cheesy but i think do not let PLE and CHD, you know, define you. Um, I have a very good quality of life despite, you know, medications and appointments and procedures. I think I try to live it the best I can. You know, I think having PLE takes up a lot of space, you know, both like mentally and, you know, waiting in a hospital room. And, you know, it is a little portion of my life, but I think that portion doesn't define, you know, my entire life and what I live for. Um, you know, I'm very thankful that I've lived a pretty typical teenage life. Um, and yeah, I just make sure that it just doesn't rule my life. But yeah, thank you so much for that question. That was a, a really good question. And I hope um, it may have answered a few questions or helped.